Hi everyone, Johnny here working on my film study skills and today I'm working on something a little bit different where I'm going to go in depth on a particular fighter and that particular fighter for today is Chingiz Alazov. If you follow one championship, you probably realise that Chingiz just beat Superbon for the one featherweight title and there was a couple of things that I thought was interesting as a result of that fight but what it actually made me go back and do was to go back and have a look at Chingiz fights from his days pre one versus his more recent run in one championship as he's made his way through the featherweight grand prix and obviously towards the title he made an interesting comment in his post-fight interview with mitch chilson you came right out of the gate firing and put a lot of pressure on him was that the game plan from jump 100 percent this is my game plan i like this style i like thai style i know i see many mistakes to the super bowl Chingiz was commenting that he likes the Thai style, but he saw some mistakes he could capitalize on, and that coming in with a high intensity was 100% part of his game plan. So let's begin this study with a focus on the idea of intensity. In combat, a good definition of intensity will be the combination of pace and power, the fuel of which is energy expenditure. As such, coming in with a fast pace and full powered shots will be a high toll on the gas tank, as opposed to a slower pacing or reduced power, which would expend less energy. After going through Alazov's back catalogue of fights, I felt that we saw a different Alazov in one championship post-2021 versus Alazov pre-2019, with the biggest contributing factor being the increased intensity he brought to his opponents. If we look at Alazov's fights with Hanata, Petrosian or Sudzakorn, his demeanour was dangerous but patient, happy to wait for the right opportunities to land clean shots. In this sequence from his fight with Hanata, pay attention to the intensity of his shots, buffering off the right cross to land the left question mark kick over the top. Despite having Hanata hurt from the kick in the first round, Alazov maintained his intensity and found an opportunity in the second to land a clean counter left hook. He found it interesting that in his debut fight for one championship, Alazov came up against a very game Enrico Kell, who came in at a higher intensity than Alazov, edging out a split decision victory as a result. This fight is a perfect case study for the benefits of intensity. One, by coming out hot to trot, the opponent would need to up their intensity or be quickly overrun. Two, if the opponent manages to meet the intensity, they would likely be down on the scorecards, meaning they would need to chase in the later rounds to catch up points wise. And three, by needing to score up, the fighter who came out strong could then look to counter and make the opponent pay for rushing the offensive options. Under the 10 point must system, when the rounds are close, sometimes it is the smaller things like cage control and aggression that can tip the result in a particular direction. If you haven't already seen this fight, it's well worth going back and watching it to put your own assessment as to how you would have scored this fight. Although the result wasn't the outcome that Alizor would have wanted, it was definitely a fight that he attributed to a change in his own focus and intensity to become the one featherweight kickboxing champion he is today. Guys, my first fight and debut fight in one championship with Enrique Kell. Before this, I don't have focus 100% to my mental. But after I lose, after I say, I talk about tournament with my coach. Coach say me, Chingiz, you're one of the best kickboxers in the planet. But now maybe you don't have focus, your main mental, you lose second fight. Please focus 100% and uh, trust me and I trust you and we, we, we go to up and we win this tournament. Intensity on its own, however, is not some magical silver bullet, but rather an amplifier of your fundamentals. Throwing haymakers at high intensity without any regard for strategy or technique will often lead to a fighter getting gassed or worse yet counted. So in this next part of the study, let's take a look at three things that I think Alizov does really well and when amplified by his newfound intensity have led him to the heights that he's achieving today. If we think about the stages of action in an exchange, there are three possible key moments that can occur when the fighters come together. One, a fighter will initiate an attack. Two, the opposing fighter may disrupt the attack by a counter-attack. Or three, an action completes the exchange and the fighters reset to a positional phase of the battle. Nate Diaz put it in a very eloquent way. The game plan is you go in there, hit him with some good shit, don't get hit. As such, a good initial attack can lead to a completion of exchange without taking any damage. In these sequences, you can see Alizov utilising his kicks to land singles with no opportunity for the opponent to counter. In his fights after the Enrico Kell fight, Alizov starts fast, setting his intentions and intensity from the start of the fight. Note the power of the kick shifting Nutterwatt's lead leg so he can't disrupt and counter. With great dexterity from both legs, I had to mention the sneaky inside crescent kick he mixes into his arsenal before we take a look at the next two fundamentals that Alizov does well. Disruption and completion go hand in hand. 
If your opponent initiates, however you can disrupt and finish, chances are you steal the points for the exchange, let alone the mental edge you might gain over your opponent. Alazov always had the ability to counter, however when coupled with his newfound intensity and mental focus, it meant he often started first and finished last. There's a good clip that I remember seeing that I couldn't find otherwise I would have put it into this film study, but essentially it's a coach or a fighter talking about how in fighting, it's not you go then I go, it's I go, I go, I go, I go. In this sequence, Alazov starts with the 3-2. As both fighters come together, Alazov frames and disrupts Superbond before he can land his counter left hook. Alazov then initiates again, this time with a 1-2, disrupting Superbond's right hand and landing a cross down the pipe, forcing Superbond backwards. Continuing forward with his offense, Alazov changes the level with the teeth, again preventing Superbond from starting. Having been on the worst end of the exchange, Superbond decides to exit the position to reset before Alazov's momentum continues to build. When you combine the fundamentals of initiation, disruption and completion with the right mentality and intensity to go with it, you get a fighter who will be a problem for many opponents. When Chingiz was talking about the flaws in the Thai style, it was in relation to the slow starts that he too was guilty of early in his career. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Chingiz Alazov as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. Don't forget to like and subscribe to join me as I continue to work on my film study skills. Thanks for watching. It looks like Chingiz has been able to go first and then also go last as well, and that's so important.